Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be doing like a chatty sort of style video. Something that I haven't really done around here. It's not like a chatty get ready with me about my life, but just a topic. And I don't really do these sorts of things, but they're things that I love watching. And they're the sort of videos that I really want to start doing because it's like a conversation and I'd like to spark these conversations with you because I like watching them myself. So, you know, like why not create something that you like watching that just makes sense embarrassingly so i have the kaleidos flower punk collection yes it's in the box that i bought it in yes this was the shipper box this is the whole collection i haven't played around with it yet yes it came out about three months ago there's no point doing a first impressions there's no point giving you a review a dedicated review on this however kaleidos excites me as a brand so so much that i can't just let it be added to my collection and not give it its moment on camera with you and just like that one-to-one -one, you know i can't not give them the one-to-one -one they deserve because i love them as a brand so i thought what we do today is i'm going to just focus on just using this collection i've done like the rest of my face makeup it's always in the description bar down below if you want to know it um but i thought we'd just use this collection i'll give you a few thoughts as we like go along and just sort of create my look and stuff but i want to talk about inspiring makeup and makeup as a whole um i, I don't know what i'm gonna call this video yet yeah, obviously the title will be up when you're watching this but kind of just inspiring makeup and what's not inspiring and the makeup community and makeup industry that sort of conversation um and i really like that sort of thing like this this sort of video where you talk about random topics like this i find them really interesting to gauge other people's opinions so yeah i thought that's just what we do today and if you're new around here hello welcome my name is meg and around here we talk about all the superficial things in life all the things that don't really matter but bring us a little bit of joy to the very grueling world <laughs> that life can be sometimes we talk about things like makeup hair care skincare fashion homeware all those things that bring us a little bit of joy and make us a little happy they don't necessarily matter they're not necessarily things that are the most important things in life but they make us happy so if that sounds like something you'd enjoy and you like those things too then hit subscribe join my little family line around here and let's uh, let's get into it let's play with the Kleidos flower punk collection three months later than everyone else has and talk about interesting makeup. So, firstly, I didn't buy the um, big vanity thing that they were selling. I really wanted it, but I had to fight myself to not buy it because I was like, you don't need it. You have too much stuff. Stop being a hoarder. Um, so I bought just like the sender box, which I think is a really cute box. Um, I'm gonna go into the lip mask. It's called a lip Blue Agave Softling Lip Mask. Oh, it's really like jelly-ish as well, okay. That's nice. Okay, all right, let's keep this on the lips. My very, very dry lips. Just whilst we do the rest of my makeup. So I'm not gonna be talking about products specifically or like makeup brands specifically, but I'm probably be using a few brands and a few products as examples to what I'm saying. But the reason I wanted to use these products for this type of video is I find a brand like Kleidos, or Kleidos as a brand, very inspiring. They sell me on the collection, they sell me on the story, they invite me into their vision. And I feel like I'm quite a creative person. In fact, I know I'm a creative person. I find that I get very down and um, very sad and very stressed and upset when I haven't been able to be or express my creative side and i think that's an interesting concept that i'd really like to explore um like a personality trait perhaps i'm not sure what it is maybe i should do like a myers briggs or something but i feel like as a creative person when i don't express that i get really i don't know just like not myself if you get like that too let me know because i'd like to know if it's like a, a me thing or if it's like a creative person thing where if you're creative and you don't get to express your creativity you feel down in the dumps i get it all the time and that's partly why i'd like to talk about this sort of thing today is i feel like brands like kaleidos kaleidos themselves are brilliant at taking you on this story this journey to give them what their thought was they're brilliant at bringing you along in their thoughts so they're going this is what our idea was this was the journey this was the story we were telling to ourselves to create this collection and we want you to be in that story too even like the little cut out windows it's almost like Oh, I'm looking through a window, it's got some beautiful jungle leaves, I'm looking into another world, and boom, you've got like this crazy, it's almost like trippy in the sense of, <laughs> like taking, I don't know, I've never taken them before, but like mushrooms or something, like weird, like there's a jungle, but there's also a vase of flowers, and there's a horse coming in, there's also a snake, 
and it's it doesn't make sense to the brain but it does and um, i think if you're a creative person that whole it does make sense but it kind of doesn't you'll understand me what when i say that but i find this so inspiring like i look at this and i think ooh artwork like this is beautiful and then when you get in further it's still telling the story but it's a little bit like alice in wonderland sort of like idea where again this mirror that's in the background it's almost like looking through the window again and you know everything here like this the border around this packaging maybe i'm looking into this more than the brands themselves thought about it but you're looking through this frame and you're looking to a mirror and you can see yourself within the story that to me is genius and i think brands that are willing to commit to something like that you know i might be making more out of this than they thought about but i think it makes me think that so therefore that's why i want to buy the collection i see myself in the story that they're creating in this mirror some people be like why they put the mirror on the outside maybe you don't think that way but i'm thinking wow look at how much effort and time and imagination they've put into something and then you get into the color story and it's very reflective of the entire story itself you know it's the same color as the plants the panther the snake the you know the little fountain they were very clever with putting their story into a color palette and then making sure they use the same story within the packaging and everything so um yeah i'll probably just be playing around with a few of these colors and i'll point to them or whatnot and i want to talk to you about some other brands that i think are as inspiring and that are struggling i think not necessarily financially struggling but struggling to engage me as a creative soul just so you've got them if you want them i'll probably swatch this at the very end of the video just if you would like to see this swatched as well as the lip products as well i'm just gonna go into this shade i think a brand that i would think of straight away as a brand that is on this line of can be creative but won't be is colourpop now colourpop likes to flog a horse my god they like to flog a horse until it is literally dead on the ground no pulse no like you know D dnr like do not bring that back that poor thing has been flogged they've done like the whole monochromatic um palette for a while now like a long time and i think for me personally the makeup industry you know when something successful brands go that's popular let's copy it in our own way um you know makeup revolution i, uh, I don't really know if i like them too much as a brand i think they lack a lot of Mm, creativity or not necessarily creativity but almost independence they they jump on bandwagons and they don't innovate too much even though they are fully capable of it you know the the things that they do innovate in are actually really successful or you know i think they are successful and i think they're pretty looking but going back to like the color pop thing is you know colourpop had those monochromatic nine pan palettes and they were really successful and lots of people bought them i didn't because i didn't like the plastic packaging i felt like it was a bit for some reason it didn't tickle my makeup pickle and therefore i wasn't going to spend my money on it that's fine if i was you know drawn to everything then i'd have a collection larger than i do and that would be quite honestly problematic so they went to town for this monochromatic nine pan shade to the point where they're like doing black and white pastels a mix of pastels tie-dye and i was starting to feel a little bit whoa okay we get it you like a monochromatic palette how many palettes do people need or or how many palettes do you need to create to get the point across that we get it we get it my problem comes with when they transfer them to the five pan palettes and their quads or their four pan palettes that's where my problem starts unfortunately because i feel like then all you're doing is saying yeah we know how to put four yellows together we know how to put put five shades of green together yeah we know how to put five shades of purple together yeah we know how to do nine shades of reds like yeah i get it so do i i i get it thank you for providing me the opportunity to have all those shades in one place however i don't need 30 iterations of a red palette or 35 iterations of a purple palette we get it it's lovely thank you for providing it to us but now can we have something different and i think i'm using colourpop as an example because they also have the absolute capability to create some wonderful things they came out with that lush life palette 
which I haven't filmed my monthly wish list yet, but they came out with that Lush Life palette and that is something I really, really want. That palette was beautiful. It showed that they understand color stories. They brought us into this story of like jungle and tropical and for, for some reason it reminded me of like toucans and like juicy like margaritas and like a jungle. I don't know, I just really loved it and I loved the packaging. They had different textures in there. It was really, really nice. I don't know what I'm doing by the way on my eyes. I'm just kind of going for it. So this might look hideous, but whatever. I would personally love to see brands stop with like so much all the time. I draw back a little bit and create things like this that are truly beautiful and spectacular and something that's treasured in your collection, you know? I find that palettes, for example, are the one thing in my collection that I get so inspired by. And I feel like I'm only inspired by it when the brand has been inspiring. Another good example, Urban Decay and their Bloody Naked palettes. I mean, we all know we're gonna buy them because it's like, oh, well, I gotta be a completionist and buy them. I mean, that's how I feel. But their new Cyber palette, I don't know, I don't know what it's called. I've only seen a couple of pictures of it. I don't know if I want it or not, and I don't know if it's just bad photography and bad marketing, but that looks so boring. Like, that's a good, that's, that is a prime example of a company that has the ability to be creative, but they cannot follow through with it. It's almost like they're scared or they don't know how to execute something. And I think that's the problem, is you have brands like Urban Decay pulling out these, you know, weird and wonderful ideas and collections, like the Wild West palette. That could have been, I feel, like so much more than it was. They could have really lent into the story with their marketing as well, you know, like, I know Kaleidos does like short videos, almost like, um, like an advertisement, like a film, like they bring you into the story. Urban Decay has got enough dough lying around to do a proper photo shoot at least, or just something that brings you into the story. They could have done amazing photographs of people like back on like horses and like in the desert, like real drawn into that wild west dream. And I know that sounds silly, but I feel like if they ha would have done something like that and really been creative with their whole process and their marketing, I feel like they would have probably got more of a hype. They would have brought people into that fantasy. And I think that's what brands are really lacking nowadays. It's almost like they're competing with each other so much so that it's just this desire to pump out new products every single week or every single month. That this lack of inspiration is just really quite evident, to be honest. Like In my head, I can see beautiful girls and boys sitting on the back of a horse, like with a background as a desert. They didn't have to go to a desert. They could have had a like green screen or whatever. Sitting on top of a horse or like leaning up against a horse with like beautiful grungy Wild West makeup or like a girl blowing smoke out of a gun or like, you know, after the, you know, the heat of a gun and stuff like that with like beautiful, like smoky eye replicating the smoke of a gun or like a boy at a bar with like, I don't know, a whiskey at a saloon and he has like golden eyes. I just feel like that palette could have been made so much better if they created a better story around it. And I think, I don't know, is it me? Is it me? Am I the only one that thinks this? I don't understand why they don't put more money into the creative process of it all because they would probably reap the rewards of that 10 times over. And I tell you what, apart from like the time and cost for models, like I can appreciate the cost of things, but it doesn't have to be expensive. Like you can make all of that in house, you know. Jeffree Star, I know, dare I say his name, but <laughs> Jeffree Star is actually a brand, or Jeffree Star Cosmetics, is actually a brand that I will tip my hat to and say that, I mean, I'm not really into his whole narcissistic, every palette has got to reflect him in some way. I can understand how he'd want to be part of the campaign shoot every time, but um, I'm not sure that he needs to be in every single palette and he needs to be the face of every single thing. Like, I, I don't know. This eye is like falling apart. It's how I look. It was not the one, but oh well. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if like he needs to be the face of every single product that he brings out, but obviously that, you know, it's his brand, it's up to him. But I feel like especially in the earlier days, to us even now, like he's brought out that it's like pink Bible looking thing and he, you know, hired out a church and like did all these promotional videos. Now you say what you want about that man and that brand, but he knows how to market a product well. You know, even I was going, oh damn, 
that's pretty. And I don't need another pink palette. I do not need another all pink palette, but he made me want it. He made me want it. And I think that's it. Like it's on my wish list on Beauty Bay. I was like, if that goes down in price by 10%, I might pick that up. And he's created a dream if I, and a fantasy and a story. And even if he, as the same brand, just did a YouTube video on it and posted a picture about it, would I really care? No, not really. Like I would have, I would have probably been like, that's pretty, that's nice, moving on. And I think this is the thing is, you know, going back to brands like ColourPop where they're creating those monochromatic palettes, they're not leaning into a massive opportunity of creating a fantasy about a palette. And I think as soon as you do, you know, maybe the average makeup consumer that's just going in to repurchase the same foundation that they always buy, or they want to experiment with a bit of colour, so they buy one more palette, or they've heard something nice, they want to treat themselves. I don't think people like that are going to be bothered about being brought into the fantasy. But I think it definitely helps. I don't know. I don't want to do this. I think I want to put the chartreuse, like, in my inner corner. This could be potentially crazy, but... I'm feeling it, let's just do it. I know that every single collection cannot have an entire promotional video, an entire photo shoot. I get it, like not, you know, if that happened all the time, we'd then feel suffocated by all of these things happening and be like, what's going on? But you look at the makeup industry at the moment and all it is, is we don't know what to do to inspire you, so we're gonna collaborate with memorabilia. We're gonna collaborate with the Powerpuff Girls, with Lizzie McGuire, with bloody, cereal brands um we're gonna collaborate with other people what's the setting spray you know we're gonna do all these things to make you feel nostalgic so that you can buy the makeup because that's what's gonna inspire you well to be honest yeah like nostalgic makeup definitely is gonna win every single time because people are nostalgic about a lot of things and so that is gonna that's gonna tick a box for a lot of people you know makeup lover or not if you are a lover of something say you're you know the, the ColourPop Powerpuff collection say Say, for example, you're not like a massive makeup wearer, but you enjoy playing around and you enjoy being inspired by collections and you are also a massive Powerpuff Girl fan, you're probably gonna buy that collection regardless of what the color is or regardless of the price. So like, nostalgia definitely plays its part and I think that's why we're seeing its popularity at the moment, especially with Disney films and just like houses or what they call like names and just brands and you know, um, entity, is that the right word? I don't really know what to call them, but just, you know, people are collaborating with other people and brands for very good reason, because it sells. So I fully appreciate that. And I think when you're doing something like that, you don't necessarily need to have a photo shoot because the brand itself or like the collaboration itself is, is selling enough. I think honestly, like the fast fashion makeup world is to blame for a lot of this oversaturated market. And I think indie brands are definitely, you know, where it's at for creativity and inspiration. Of course, indie brands, well, most indie brands, especially smaller ones, could not afford to do like promotional videos and model photo shoots. That's just asking a little bit too much of them. Um, but their inspiration or, or what makes them purchasable is the color story. So I feel like the makeup industry at the moment is like, you have really successful collaborations and what's selling that makeup is the collaboration. Um, and then you have makeup that's really, really great, has no real PR or like promotional videos or anything like that surrounding it, but the color story and the textures and the quality of the makeup is phenomenal. So that's like a selling point in itself. And then you have makeup, like I said, like the Urban Decay, um, Naked Cyber, wh whatever this palette is called. You have that sort of palette where it's kind of, <sighs> the brand thinks it can rely on pushing the same old thing and people are gonna buy it, similar to the ColourPop selling their monochromatic palettes. But we soon get bored. There's no inspiration. It's like, well, what am I gonna do with this palette that I'm gonna do differently now with this one? Or, you know, I already have a, a nine pan blue eyeshadow palette ColourPop that you've already sold me, so what makes this one different? And, and why should I buy it, you know? Okay, yeah, it looks pretty, granted, but like, what am I gonna do with and now eight shades of blue? I mean, speaking to the wrong person here, because I love, I love color, but it, it's that sort of thing where then they've gotta take it to the next level and go, okay, we know that you like color because we've sold it to you and you've picked it up, but now we're gonna 
give you a story, sell you probably the same bloody colours but in a variation like slightly differently, we're going to give you a story now. So now you're going to be sold on the story. And I think that's where they're really missing a trick. They're really missing a trick and I'd really, as a creative person, a creative soul, I'd love to see makeup go to this next level of artistry and let's all be re-inspired once more. There's nothing better, I think, than feeling inspired. I love feeling inspired. It makes me feel energized. It makes me feel happy. It makes me feel like eager and just like, ah, I can't contain my excitement. I'd like to know what you guys think as well about the makeup industry and how the creative process has kind of been like lost. Like I remember when makeup wasn't really a thing and so when Urban Decay, I mean I keep using the same brand so I'm, I do apologize for that. Okay another example, another really good example actually I think, <laughs> is when Too Faced came out with the peach collection. Do you remember that bloody hype of that peach collection? I wanted and got a lot of that peach collection. If I could have afforded more of it, I would have got more of it. I loved that dream and fantasy that they were selling. Some of it was a little bit cringy, but actually that was part of it, you know? So yeah, I'm really missing being brought into fantasies and ah, oh, just being sold a story. I really love that. I want to have beautiful makeup in my collection. I want to be inspired by things. I do think though the brands that are getting it really right are the brands that can do quality and sell you a fantasy and get a good colour story all in one. Some brands just don't try and you can tell and you're like, what is this crap? Like, what is this? And I don't think it's good enough. I, I really, I really don't. I don't think it's good enough. I think especially when a lot of brands are charging as much as they do for makeup. Like everyone knows, or most people know that makeup is dirt cheap to create, especially when you're a big entity brand. You know, when you're a big brand, makeup isn't that expensive to create. And if it is, you can oik up the price, which they will do anyway, you know? They'll be like, this one has four metallics in it or it has a one duo chrome and that's why we're gonna oik up the price to 10 pounds more than it should be. And it's like, yeah, but Juvia's Place, there's like the Wahala 2 palette and they put a duo chrome in and it was very inspired. They maybe wouldn't have had the money to do like loads of videos and stuff, but they did some really cool photo shoots with it. The artwork was nice, the colour story was nice. They put a duo chrome in, they put glitters in, they put textures in, and their pricing was still cool. And they're like an indie brand. They're like by themselves. They're not supported by anyone else. So like I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Don't tell me that you can't do things. You can. I just hate poor execution. It's just really it's really not cool, man. It's not cool. This whole look is a, an absolute hot fire mess, but you know, we just, we're running with it. <laughs> Aside from colour cosmetics as well, I think there's this, there's this thing about copying each other and looking this, like everything has to look the same. You know, you pick up a foundation bottle, nine out of 10 times, it's not gonna be that interesting. It's just gonna be a foundation bottle with the branding on it and maybe a nice coloured lid. It's not gonna be that interesting. If it's in a squeezy tube or a glass bottle or a plastic bottle, it's gonna look like a foundation bottle or, you know, foundation. It's gonna look the same. You look at Nabla's new skin tint and it's got like a piece of artwork on the back of that bottle. Now, how hard was it to do that? Because I'm pretty sure it probably wasn't that hard to, you know, actually put that on a bottle. Like that packaging is goals. It's beautiful, it's in an airless pump. The product could be bang on average for all I know. I mean, I've got it and I haven't tried it out yet typical me but it could be pretty average but the bottle sells me on it so i think it's one of those things where if you ask yourself like why you put on makeup and why you enjoy makeup if it's to be creative i'm showing that pink again i'm going to go all over the shimmers if it's to be creative if it's to express yourself you probably find that you enjoy being brought into a fantasy and i think like you can do that on a budget as well. Like, I'm not saying that you need to be buying really expensive makeup or indie makeup to be feeling like that, you know? I think even promotional photos can make you feel really inspired and wow, that's what I want to spend my money on and that's why I want this product. And I think with such a saturated industry now, brands aren't stepping up. If brands can't be bothered to even sort of convince you on the sale of their own product by taking decent photos and true to tone like swatches and colors and like good lighting, 
what why am i gonna be bothered to work three hours to buy your eyeshadow palette or your lipstick range if you can't be bothered as the people selling it to advertise it properly and when you say it out loud you're like yeah i'd really like to know what you guys think about this topic about inspiration and the level of effort brands put into inspiring you into almost telling you why you should pick their product over anyone else's i'd really like to know what your thoughts are because i feel really passionately about this imagine imagine natasha denona circo loco palette that palette freaked me out a bit i kind of want it i kind of don't i'm not sure i haven't been sold on it the brand hasn't made me feel like i should buy their palette for a particular reason the brand hasn't inspired me but the palette has the potential to really really skyrocket with me i think if photos like even simple photos that natasha denona can definitely afford because let's be honest her palettes are spenny and makeup isn't that expensive to create not even hers it's like it's they're special shades but they're not like that special they're not a hundred pounds worth of you know it didn't cost her 50 quid to make that palette it probably cost her 10 pounds a palette maybe but it didn't cost like a hundred pounds <laughs> so she has she has bank she has made her money so you know it wouldn't be much to ask for some nice photos some inspiring photos imagine this for a moment bring you into my brain a circus ring a vintage or a modern twist on a vintage circus ring with models that are all doing their acts you know like digitally enhance a, a woman sitting on a lion for example with like the bright pink eyeshadow going across um you know two gymnasts or like people on the trapeze i don't i'm not really familiar with like circus terminology with beautiful makeup on you know um the backstage of a circus of the makeup artists putting on the clown's makeup but it's not clown it's all of the eyeshadow in amazing colors like lots of speckly dots you know all of these things i'd be like whoa i want that but no we just got a picture of the palette and was like buy this buy this it's nice we're natasha denona we sell nice things look at us we do color woohoo no like <laughs> that's rubbish like okay great you know a lot of people wanted that palette a lot of people got that palette and i'm sure the quality is great can you just imagine for one moment the amount of people that would have bought that palette or would have been brought into the story with a selection of photos you know a photo shoot that they did in a day because they could only afford to budget it for a day of you know even like i said you know clowns with inspiring photos or like digitally enhanced like i don't know a, like a lion or like a a, a ring leader person in the circus standing on the trapezium with a spotlight coming down on them with just the makeup glowing like you can digitally enhance that in photoshop like i could do that in an afternoon i'm pretty sure a brand can do that you know wouldn't it be amazing if brands took the time to do that and i think what bothers me is if like i can think about these things why why are they not doing that you could also look at the other end of the spectrum you've got pat mcgrath over here serving beautiful beautiful images on her instagram like um you know images that like slightly move like a boomerang and you know i was expecting this beautiful color story a little bit like this like really inspired of like a few colors and like neutrals all put together with her special shades in i was really like ooh. I think I'm gonna buy this. Like whatever this is, I haven't seen the palette yet, but I think I'm gonna buy this. The inspiration was there. I was looking at the photographs like, ooh, sparkly pink, ooh, a hint of purple, ooh, a hint of blue, ooh, this could be for me. And then I saw the palette and I was like, oh, we got catfished. <laughs> and I think that's the thing, right? Is if a company can do both things, they can sell you on the story, they can give you inspiration, they can tease you, they can go, yeah, well, guess what? This is gonna be the best thing since sliced bread and you're gonna own it and you're gonna want it and you're gonna play with it every single day because look how inspiring it is. And then they execute the palette and then imagine getting the makeup item that reflects the inspiration and you're like, all my Christmases have come at once. If you are made to feel like that because good marketing has happened and good inspiration has happened and good execution has happened, it's like, it, it's just like this perfect seamless, yes, I will spend my hard earned cash on you, my child. You know, I bought this whole collection 
full price because guess what? It deserved to be paid for. <laughs> like it was good. I knew the quality would be great because I love Kaleidos quality. You know, today all these things on my eyes are really pretty pretty. I'm gonna dip into some of these lip kits as well. I'm gonna swatch them at the end like I said, but I think I'm gonna go for a nude maybe because I'm that predictable. I think this topic of conversation for me it becomes especially poignant when it comes to brands that expect us to pay more. I think if a brand like Elf or I don't know like MUA or Revolution I suppose because they're like in that category of drugstore affordable cheap makeup. Do I expect them to bring me along on a fantasy? Not really. Like I don't think that that's what their places in the like in the beauty community in the makeup industry i think that they're there to provide affordable makeup if they do some pretty swatches and a girl with a cute eye look on or a boy with a cute eye look on it's going to sell me enough because i don't need to be bought into it you know the fact that it's affordable and it's cute is enough it, it's enough um but when it comes to the brands that are expecting you to pay coin for their collections and they think they can get away with the same thing that ELF does for a four pound palette or Pat McGrath for like a hundred pound palette. I'm like, mm, we have a problem here. A pro uh, Houston, we have a problem. You know, something's not, what what's going on here? <laughs> I mean, look at these, look at these. <laughs> it's amazing. You get four liquid lipsticks. I've never tried this um, formulation before. Four liquid lipsticks in here. I've not actually seen these because I've just taken the cellophane off. I love this tin. I think it's so adorable. Like, they didn't have to do this. They could have made this a paper or plastic tube or whatever. Or they could have just not even bothered at all. They could have just shoved these in boxes like every other brand. They decided to make a tin and create literal artwork on it. Like, like, please, look at this. This is artwork. This. This is the commitment I want to good products. I'm not saying that every brand has got to create these amazing videos and pictures and all this promotional stuff. I'm not saying that. That would be incredibly unnecessary and wasteful. But for at least the brands that are expecting you to pay that a little bit more for their products, I want to know why. Tell me why. Tell me why I should buy your product over someone else's. Tell me why I should spend £100 on your eyeshadow palette rather than spending £10 on somewhere else. Tell me why I should invest my money into something that I don't necessarily need, you know? This isn't food, I'm not gonna die without this makeup. So, like I went to food straight away, but why, why, why? It baffles me. Okay, I think I'm gonna go into the shade N-U-O-2, which is like nude two uh, in the shade June. Um, yeah, I never tried their liquid lipsticks before, so I've got this lip mask still on. I should probably just wipe it off with a tissue. As a quick speed review of this, I think it's really, really nice. It's definitely hydrating. It wasn't irritating on the lips at all. Nourish the lips. Was it the most nourishing thing I've ever had in my lips? I, I don't know. Time will tell. It definitely soaked into my lips. It wasn't like Vaseline. It was actually quite nice. My lips don't feel textured, they feel quite nice. So let's try this lipstick. I like the applicator. Wow, wow, wow. That was one swipe, so it has like a little well in it, but you can just see here, it's got that little well in it where the lipstick, or um, sorry, liquid lipstick sits in. And I've just done my entire lips going backwards and forwards, kind of like flipping it and just pushing the product around. They're like a matte finish, but I mean, like I said, this isn't a review, but they're like a really, really soft matte finish. They're called lip clays. Uh, to me, I find clay something that I associate with drying, but not these. These are really, really pretty. Beautiful tone. Doesn't quite go with the eye look, but nice. Mmm. I hope they come out with more of these. Really pretty. Because I said I would, I'm just going to swatch the eyeshadow palette and the lipsticks for you now. If you don't want to see that, I'm going to put a timestamp on the screen somewhere for you now. If you want to skip ahead to the end of this video to like hear my final deliberations. <laughs> Thank you. 
video today has been I feel like I've had an agenda in mind and then kind of went off piste in like anger and passion <laughs> please tell me down below about what you feel about this topic sorry if I've like ranted and rambled a lot but I genuinely feel passionate about this I feel passionate about creativity and execution and if you're going to spend your money on something why spend it on someone that cannot be asked to be creative about it and you having to fill that position to try and make their product worth it like what <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you've enjoyed today's video i'd like to do some more of these chatty sort of star videos i actually find them really interesting next time i think i want to come with some more poignant points to make and an agenda so that i don't derail so much because i felt today has been a bit like that but thank you anyway for watching thumbs this video up if you have enjoyed and talk to me down below like i said engage with me on this topic because i'd really really love to talk to you and get to know your thoughts subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell because then you'll be notified of all the videos i upload i upload every single week anyone want to miss out on more content on me on me from me with me y you know what i'm trying to say here you know what i'm trying to say thank you once again for watching take care be safe and i'll see you in my next one bye